What made you decide to become an event planner? I mean, you sound like you love it. I do. Right? <laughs> but what, what, did you always want to be an event planner no. or how did this come about? So it's a funny story. Um, I, my sisterpreneur, who uh-huh. is my younger sister, um, okay. Ivy Chambashi, she owns Urban Rising Group. Uh-huh. Um, she, I told you, I started planning events at 16. And uh-huh. so I would have, I would celebrate just to celebrate. So okay. whatever it is, I would celebrate. So okay. my 16th birthday, I had a big bash um, for holidays. We would have, you know, a nice uh, dinner and mm-hmm. I would plan out the napkins and who sat where and what we were having. And um, when I when I started into the working world, I was mm-hmm. working um, in retail and at in while I was there, um, my manager, district manager um, offered me the, the opportunity to plan the logistics for the job fairs. OK. And so for six years, I would plan these huge job fairs where we would have 400 plus uh, applicants. Wow. Yes. So I had to do the setup of the tents. I would have the tables there. I would make sure the managers were trained to know how to interview. Um, and so after I did that for some years, my sister said, you should open a business. Really? Really? You love planning events. You love logistics. You're always on, um, have a timeline. Mm-hmm. You have a, a attention to detail. You love to handle everything. So everyone is stress-free. You should do it. And I told her, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so after about a year or so of her, you know, dropping the hint and mm-hmm. saying, you're already doing it. It's something exactly. that you love. You're really good at it. Start the business. So um, I went, there, uh, went from there and started thinking about it. And I said, okay, well, if I'm going to try this out let me go and get some some type of some type of certification so I I was certified as a meeting and event planner Mm -hmm. and then um after that I started planning some events but then I really felt like if I'm going to do this I have to do this right and so I need to learn business yes I didn't have anyone in my family who was an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. um so I didn't have anyone to mentor me right out of the gate and so that's when I started going um to write my business plan to structure my finances um to make sure that my operations were uh set up so that when I received a client I knew exactly what I needed to do I had an intake form and so um I love events but it it took a little pushing (laughs) for me to start the business but I I do owe it to my sister Ivy because she she didn't let up (laughs) well you know I like the fact that you did your homework and that you did the research and you structured yourself so that you weren't not just doing it because the love of it because that's great but you also got the training to do it so that you could do it at a professional level because it's one thing like you said to plan your birthday party or a dinner for your family and things like that but when you're bringing clients in that are depending on you for what may be the greatest day of their life you know or a business and they don't have a lot of funds and they hire you to do this launch party for them it has to go out right or it may not happen again. Yes. So I, I'm glad you had an opportunity to let the audience know that, yes, you love doing this, but whatever you love to do, whatever you want to do, you know, that's fine. You know, get the, you know, get the information and the education you need so yes. that you can do it on a professional level. Yes. And right? learn from the people who are, are successful at it. They're yes. doing it already. Yes. Um, and so I developed a lot of relationships with uh, the facilitators, the professors and the um, business owners while I was going through my certification process. Mm-hmm. So to this day, you know, if I have I come against something that, you know, I'm not familiar with, I can reach out to someone who has, you know, 40 years in the game right yeah exactly and building that type of network is so important yes. and I think a lot of times we think when we start a business we're in this silo by ourselves and there's so it's not true and there's so many people who want to just give information they may be retired they've had their business they've had their heyday and they just want something to do yes and they'll come and help you just because exactly you know so Encouragement for those who love to start a business. I love to encourage people. Just know that you're not alone and that you can find people who will help you. You know, the tribe is waiting for you. You just need to show up and let them know that you want to be a part. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I I believe in building relationships. Definitely. Um, You cannot do anything on your own. And if we were meant to do that, we would be on this earth by ourselves. That's right. But we have a family. We have friends. We have extended 
extended family, we have mentors, and we have those those mentees that we need to pull up. Exactly. You know, so they, they say build as you climb. Yes. So I'm always looking for someone who may need a little help or, you know, I, I love sharing resources. So mm-hmm. if I find someone who needs some help with where to start when they're networking, I'm, I'm always there to share tips and tricks and things that, you know, I've done and experienced that I believe could be helpful. Could be helpful. Yeah. Because no man is an island. That's right. Correct. We have to work together. Yes. And, you know, it's so funny because when you start you know, bridging these networking relationships, you realize that there is no real separation except us separating ourselves. Correct. You know, because there's someone there that can help you. You just have to reach out, open your mouth and not be afraid. Yes. And so I always like to touch on fear a little bit um, in my conversation before we go any further. And I'd like to know, like in planning your first events, how did you overcome the fear? Because I'm sure that, you know, it's like, oh, my God, they're trusting me with this. Yes. You know, <laughs> what were the steps you took to overcome the fear to even get started with your business? Let's start that yeah. there. So um, I have a, a strong foundation. My family is very supportive. Okay. So even when sometimes you have those those moments where you doubt yourself, mm-hmm. I can always pick up the phone and my mom is like, get it go do it. My right. sister's like, you can do it. You did it then you can do it now. Right. So I had to learn how to stop those negative thoughts and yes. reach out to people. Even if I didn't feel it, I had to reach out to people so that they could tell me and then I could believe it. Exactly. Yeah. So I have, um, I, I do the same thing now. I, uh, have a couple post-its, uh, in my office and one is stop waiting, start creating. So mm-hmm. it's like you, you have to stop that fear that says, wait, you're not ready or stop you don't have this right. and it's like you have to stop it and you have to create because someone out there is waiting on it that's right so that's that's one thing and then I feel um strongly about uh doing the work yes yes so yes. another way to combat fear is to do the work yeah so if you say you want to be an event planner or a business owner you have to get out there and do it there are some days when you don't your emotions are you know up in the air and you really don't feel it but you have to do it my mom always says do it afraid yeah so once you do that once you you start doing those things that you fear you'll you'll watch the fear disappear and you it, it doesn't always totally go away but you can control it and identify it and say oh that's just fear exactly you mm-hmm. learn how to con- to identify it so you can control it yes yeah and I had Dr. Utley on last week and she was talking to us about communication and she said entrepreneurs cry and she said, but no one talks about yes. that, you know? Yes. So every once in a while, there might be a tear or two that you will shed yes. or feel like shedding. Yes. And it's okay. Wipe your tears and keep going. And yes. you might cry the next day too, but wipe those tears and keep going. Because yes. like you said, there's an audience waiting for you. There's someone who's waiting for your product. You just have to just walk forward. There'll be people to meet you, greet yes. you, help you. You know, God has put angels all over. Yes. And those angels are just waiting to help you. Yes. But you have to get out the door. But you got to get out the door. <laughs> you have to go out and do it. Exactly. <laughs> so um, I have some more questions. Okay. Um, what steps do you take to promote someone's event? Do you use ads, social media? How do you how do you help someone promote their event, especially since you cater to nonprofit organizations and small businesses? Yes. And that's one reason why I started focusing on them, because mm-hmm. sometimes as a small business or small business owner, mm-hmm. you're focused on your work yes. or as a nonprofit, you're focused on doing the work. Yes. And so um, sometimes you need someone outside to help you mm-hmm. to get the word out and bring the visibility. So a couple things that I do, and that's why um, my company now uh, does event um, marketing is because sometimes small businesses, small business owners don't know how to get out there. Okay. So I make sure that they have some kind of social media presence. Right. So that's with like a Facebook fan page, a business page, make sure that they're on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um, if there are associations that they need to be connected to, make sure that they're connected to those associations. Mm -hmm. Um, I love to re, uh, refer, uh, networking groups because it's, it's a way to get the word out. And then, and also 
one of the biggest things that I think can help a small business and a nonprofit is your email marketing. Yes. Because that is a list that you own. Mm -hmm. So I help them with um, setting up their email marketing platforms. I can help them with campaigns. Um, I it's it's something called a drip campaign where you start yes. with you know a large message and then mm -hmm. you drip into yes. the the bucket that you want or the the reason why you're having the event. Um, so I, I help small businesses that way. So sometimes it comes in the form of paid ads on Facebook, um, or it could be just a very strategic plan via email mm -hmm. to get the word out and to highlight some of the things that are happening at the event before the event happens. Okay. So, yeah. So do you, when you sit down with them and you guys work through how you're going to do this, that's a part of the budget. Yes. Okay. Um, because, and, and all small business owners, they're not all in the same place. Right. Some of them have a large audience. Some of them have a large tribe and all they need is a little help with what to say and when to say it. Right. Some uh, small businesses or nonprofits haven't said anything because they've been so busy working in the business or in the organization and not on it. So right. I help them set up those things. So, um, um, though that that's kind of where I get started, but in the first meeting, they can tell me, okay, yes, you know, we have clients that are waiting for this and then I can just take the ball and go. And then sometimes they say, um, we want to have this event or this fundraiser, but we've never done it before and we've okay. never told anyone about it. And then that's where I start the marketing campaign sometime before the event and right. the plan in the planning process to get it going yes. and make it a success. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, um, you take event planning to a whole nother level. Oh, thank you. You really do. Cause I can see, I can hear the detail in your voice. Now, how do you decide how much to charge for an event? I don't need to know what your prices are because if one, someone wants to contact you based on this video, you know, we'll make sure they have your information. But how do you decide how to charge for an event? So it de I have a flat rate that I start at. Okay. Um, and then uh, there are certain things that are um, included in that. Mm -hmm. But it just, it depends on what other um uh, extra or add-on services they need. So for uh, for instance, when they hire me, mm -hmm. they come and they're looking at my packages. That's just for planning the event. Okay. But if they need any event marketing or if they need any system set up, then those are extra extra charges that are added on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I have a flat rate and then, um, I can also, because sometimes, um, small business owners just need management day of, right. Then it's hourly, uh, hourly, hourly. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yes. Wow. So you've had, the reason I asked you that was because I just wanted to develop a sense of the process because you have developed a complete professional process for your event planning. And I think sometimes some people don't take event planning as serious as they should. And they want to start one of these event planning business because they like having parties yes. and they don't do the work. Yes. So that's why I'm asking you so many questions. Because <laughs> we want to know, yeah. you know, because I really want to help small businesses, you know, and people who want to start yes. an event planning business to really understand that, you may need help as a small business to get the word out there. And so you want to hire the right person to help you. And if you want to start an event planning business, you want to make sure you, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's yes. so that you even know how to charge people. Yes. So in, you know? included in the package, and, and this is something that I've uh, learned because I've been doing it so long is mm -hmm. because I travel back and forth to the small business. So mileage is included. Right. Um, I also help with budgeting. So if you say I only have X amount of dollars to spend, I make sure that in the budget, the dollars are spent in the right areas. Um, another thing that I do is uh, help with a timeline. So there are certain things that you need to do and accomplish and, and, and milestones that you need to hit right. when you're planning events. So I will sit down and map out a, a timeline from now until the event. What are the things that we need to have happen? Who's working? working on what aspects and if there are holes, how can I fill in those holes? So that's, those are a couple things that I factor into every event um, when I'm planning the event, because 
like you said earlier, sometimes they only have that one time. That's right. They only have X amount of dollars for that one time for that one purpose. Yes. And you want to make sure you get the most value for your, your, your dollar. Exactly. Exactly. So you want it to be the event, you know, that you remember for the right reason. Yes. You know, yes. you know, and that the outcome is what you need it to be. 